Item number, SCP-117. Object class, safe. Special containment procedures. SCP-117 is to be kept in the small leather pouch it was found in, unless in use or in current study. Any personnel deemed mentally fit may enter the containment cell of the SCP, though if they are suspected to be trying to remove the SCP without permission, they are to be searched, and if that is the case, they are to be reprimanded. The door to the containment cell should remain locked, and a guard posted only when the object is in use. Description The item appears to be a regular multi-tool, of unknown make and brand, found in Florida. At first glance, only the normal tools are found, screwdriver, knife, can opener, etc. But if the user is faced with a task, regardless of what tool the subject intends to pull out and use, a tool perfectly fitted for the job will take its place, regardless of spatial quantities that are being broken by the tool. All other tools always seem to be present, though, after the task is completed and the tool closed, unless faced with a task requiring that tool again, the tool cannot be found on the tool again. Addendum Document number 117A Effects of Usage After countless uses and testing with the SCP, it has been discovered to cause harm and possibly death to the user by means of absorbing iron, copper, calcium, and zinc from the user's body as long as the user is touching the device. Gloves seem to have no curbing effect on this, and the rate of absorption seems to depend on the tools used or created by SCP-117. It is advised that only Class D personnel are used in conjunction with this SCP to prevent death or injury of researchers. Document number 117B Usage Log of SCP-117 Redundant entries not entered, unless they exhibit different results. Situation A loose screw on a metal plate. Tool produced by SCP. Screwdriver, though not the standard screwdriver. Situation A nail. Barely in piece of timber. Tool produced by SCP. Standard hammer. Situation. A piece of timber with proposed cut lines drawn. Tool produced by SCP. An electric saw, which needed no outside power source. Situation. A piece of bulletproof glass. Tool produced by SCP. An unknown laser cutting tool, which needed no outside power source. Situation. SCP tool produced by SCP, a bloodied combat knife. Situation: An agent with a broken bone, tool produced by SCP, a small item with a trigger, which when pulled emitted an odd radiation, instantly healing the injury. Situation: Class D personnel fit for execution, tool produced by SCP, data expunged. Situation: Communication needed with SCP-363. Tool produced by SCP. Data expunged. Situation. A non-shuffled deck of playing cards. Tool produced by SCP. A mid-size mechanical shuffler. Situation. Class D personnel with terminal cancer. Tool produced by SCP. Item similar to sixth test. Situation. A perfectly healthy Caucasian human male with no criminal record. Tool produced by SCP. Data expunged. Situation. A perfectly healthy Hispanic human male with no criminal record. Tool produced by SCP. Data expunged. Situation. A silver dinner fork in perfect condition. Tool produced by SCP. No tools could be found on the SCP. Situation. Data expunged. Tool produced by SCP. A screwdriver. Situation. A dirty window. Tool produced by SCP. A nozzle that sprayed a mixture of soap and water that completely cleaned the window. Situation. An uncharged iPod. Tool produced by SCP. The iPod end of the charging cord, which needed no outside power source. Situation. A blank sheet of standard computer paper. Tool produced by SCP. A pen filled with a seemingly infinite supply of black ink. Situation. A Samsung cellular phone. Tool produced by SCP. A small device that when attached to the phone, increased signal strength by approximately 250%. Document number 117G. Developments concerning SCP-117. 
After exposing the SCP to an array of different items and people, it appears that the object may very well be sentient to some degree. Because of this, we must consider the fact that the SCP is susceptible to telepathy. It must not come into contact with any SCPs with known telepathic powers. Dr. Kleiman The above was a transcript of the personal notes of Dr. Kleiman, who seems to have taken a harmless interest in the object. Testing with other SCPs is suspended. Note number 1171. Testing is suggested for SCP-882 and is under consideration by Dr. Kleiman. Note number 1172. Further biological testing is halted by Dr. Kleiman after incident number 117-4A. The SCP is still fit to be used for any repairs around the facilities, as long as the SCP is followed by one or more armed guards briefed on the proper use of the SCP. Note number 117-4. After much consideration, I must deny testing of SCP-117 with SCP-882. The risk of damaging SCP-882 is simply too great to overlook. Dr. Kleiman. Note number 117-26. After incident number 117-3F, I'm forced to put a stop to all testing of SCP-117 in conjunction with other SCPs. The risk of a total loss of containment is far too great. All biological testing is to be halted until a later date, as the results so far have proved… varying. And there is a limit of Class D staff available for my research. Dr. Kleiman. Note number 11727. Biological testing resumed by Dr. Kleiman, with mixed results. Testing of SCP-117 with other SCPs under reconsideration by O5, though it seems unlikely further testing will occur. Note number 11728. Testing is suggested for SCP-682. Lesson complete. If you missed the previous orientation, Go watch SCP-116, The Brittle Boy, right now. Or for the complete course, watch this playlist.